That's gonna be. What if he's on the GoPro? Here. Like, can he record on his end? Hey! Though I think this is gonna be more of like just us chatting and less like a formal thing because yeah. all six of us, all three of us, all all, all three of us, boats. all three boats are electrically powered. So we're just gonna have a little chitty chat yeah. about electric boats. You guys actually have a Pearson yeah. 35, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's almost the exact same yeah. height. Cool. Yeah. cool. And what is what's your boat? We have an Endeavor 32. Okay. Okay. Did your boat come with a diesel motor and did you guys, like, did it come with a working diesel? Uh, yeah. So uh, we had a Westerbeek 20V2 in the boat and it had 350 hours on it, but we wanted to go electric. We ended up, we ended up selling the diesel, um, and, you know, we just really wanted to go electric, you know, and I, I know, like, a working diesel is, you know, it's valuable and everything and, and we were thinking about keeping it, but we just, Really wanted to do a 100% electric boat, zero fossil fuel, so that's what we're doing. Awesome, yeah, I wonder awesome. if you can high five. High five. Yeah, high five through Skype. Wow, um, yeah. <laughs> and so our boat also came with a non-working diesel, um, and I guess you guys probably know most of our story, but what about your guys' boat? How, Same thing. How, we, non-working? Yeah, we actually looked for a boat without a diesel working, so. Yeah. Oh, so you guys probably got a good deal on it. Yeah. 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 Three grand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, no, 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 no. no, no. 2200. 2200. 20, oh, 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 oh
and just, especially because we're trying to go, like, full electric, we won't have propane or anything. We just don't want to have to go to shore for something like that. Yeah, we want to be completely unplugged. We don't, We want to be as completely unplugged as possible, so just, you know, as off the grid as we possibly can. And if we're going to shore for propane or we're going to shore for diesel or gasoline or anything like that, um, we don't. We wouldn't feel that way. So, what about you guys? Um, smell. I didn't want to have to deal with the smell. Of course, we want to do all electric. I mean, our setup is really set for all electric. No. So we wanted to go all electric because one, the smell. I'm gonna do two. Right. And again, we didn't want to have to go to shore all the time too. I mean, yeah. the mo the most off grid we can get, the more happy we're gonna be. Yeah. So. <laughs> there's there's definitely the obvious like green aspect of it. And I know that a lot of people are like, you know, if you use your diesel motor conservatively, you know, you can go for a year and only use a couple gallons of diesel fuel. We get that. And that's not that harmful for the environment, but you're using a fuel source from a million years ago, not a fuel source from yesterday. And to us, that distinction is huge. And that's what makes the big difference for us. I think, uh, maintenance is obviously the big one. We, so <laughs> we've had to do a lot of upgrades on our electric motor. Um, but that's basically because we started off with stuff we got for free and stuff we got on eBay for super duper cheap. Uh, you guys are going to have it much better off. You'll probably never have to maintain anything on your boat ever because with lithium batteries and a, and a working motor from the beginning, um, there's you just, you just, you check battery cables from time to time, make sure they're not wiggly. Like that's it. There's no maintenance to them. Um, and yeah, smell, vibration, noise, all that stuff. We were motoring in the, the river and it was like, Super so calm. calm. Like you can yeah. hear the birds chirping. We're having like a nice conversation. So yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Having to motor up the Rio with the thing, it kind of ruined it for us because it was so loud the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Hey guys, I came across this electric boat where the electric motor is actually mounted under the boat and therefore stays uh, cooler as the water cools it. Would you consider it as a future project? I think I know what he's talking about. So Torquedo makes yeah. a little pod drive that goes underneath your boat. I don't know what the rating, I think they were like two kilowatts or something. They're designed for like very small sort of day sailors like 22 feet maybe um probably a good option i guess for those because you just bolt it on but you're one seal away from ruining your whole motor so i don't know yeah. um there's lots of liquid cooled electric motors out there though and lots of air cooled ones uh how is yours cooled just air, air? cooled yeah air. just has a fan yeah. on it or yeah it's got an internal fan internal fan and we went to the junkyard and bought a, a car fan nice. that we yeah. yeah so since we are in the in the cooling uh, genre of <laughs> questions. Uh, we had a lot of comments about our last video about the the our, our motor, how much yeah. it was heating. Yeah. So yeah, so our motor's designed to go to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and run there continuously for it says 10,000 plus hours. So it's not going to damage the motor any to run it that hot. However, we were losing efficiency at that heat. Um, and the reality is we're probably never, ever, ever going to motor for two hours at hull speed, ever. It was mostly just a test, and we may as well use the river to come to our friend's house to test it. Um, but the reality is we're going to continue to use our motor the same way we've been using it for like 10 minutes at a time because we plan on being able to charge it off of solar. Um, so I don't think it's going to be an issue overheating in the future. Uh, we'll probably end up upgrading our motor before we end up dealing with the heating issue on the boat. Um, yeah, it was mostly just a test and everything worked out fine, so. So the big question, diesel versus electric. <laughs> a lot of people think yeah. that uh, we're all trying to replace a diesel engine with an electric motor, which is completely not the case. <laughs> I mean, it definitely depends on what you want. And I mean, if you have a perfectly good diesel engine in your boat, we're not saying like rip it out and replace it with an electric engine. It's just about like what you think you're capable of and I think we really want to be more like you guys in a sense that I know you guys rely on your sails that's your main form of propulsion we want our sails to be our main form of propulsion and our electric motor is just a backup auxiliary there's a reason it's an it's an auxiliary motor it's not a main motor it, you're, you have a sailboat not a motor boat so um, you know it, we just want to work on our sailing skills and and be able to sail in tough weather and and everything you know like we were reading about you know Lynn and Larry party are probably the two biggest um or you know the, the biggest examples of the fact that you don't even need a, a motor uh you know if you're not on a schedule and you want to sail so um but you know for us we we want that yeah. we want that we want to be full-time cruisers so we're not having to worry about like time constraints and I think a lot of people 
worry about electric motors because of time constraints or like constraints with weather, but we're going to aim for the best possible weather window before we do anything. And we're going to make like, we're not going to have the time constraints that normal people might have and therefore need to rely on a diesel. Yeah. I think that's like the first line on our website is like an electric motor might not be for you. <laughs> it's not it's, for everyone. It's very yeah. true. It's not for everyone. Um, and yeah, I think it replaces, like, I think we said in, the, in our very first Q and A, that we're not trying to replace a diesel motor, we're trying to replace like a sculling oar mm -hmm. because our boat's a little bit too big to like actually row in and out of an anchorage. I know the parties had a sculling oar and they sculled in and out of all the anchorages. Yeah. Um, so for us, it's more a replacement for that because honestly, diesel and electric aren't comparable. Like you're taking a fuel source from a million years ago and putting it into an infrastructure that's for a hundred years been designed around that infrastructure and fuel source. So it's, it's, it's not apples to apples. People always want to compare it apples to apples. Like, oh, well, 10 miles is nothing compared to my diesel. I can motor for a thousand miles. And we're like, they're not the same thing. They're, they, we've never claimed that they were. I think when it comes to electric motor too, like pe people need to understand that you have to be patient with this. For instance, sailing against a current with electric motor or without a motor at all, you yeah. just wait for the current to be favorable for you and you go in, and if you know that there's going to be a current against you, then you just wait because yeah. the tide will turn. And you'll Every be able six to get hours, it. you get a new opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've talked to a lot of uh, old salts, and they say the same thing. You just have to have common sense and seamanship. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. seamanship is huge. Right. Because yeah. yeah. uh, we've been sailing how long as a species without motors? <laughs> I think it's really interesting because we came into this knowing we were going electric. So we yeah. knew we didn't have a base of all right we've done diesel before so we have all of this diesel engine That's and this true. power all of us started all with of us electric started none with of us electric. started with like 20 years of yeah. diesel experience and then switched so none to electric. of us know that difference so yeah. to compare that we wanted diesel or we wanted electric is kind of yeah. null and void it's yeah. like comparing if somebody learned how to ride a bicycle and, and somebody says, well, if you have a motorcycle, it's right. faster. Yeah, yeah, it's not no, the same thing. The right. yeah. And yeah. if you're riding a bicycle for a reason, you're riding a motorcycle yeah. for a different Exactly. So. You can get yeah. there with both, both. just yeah, yeah. slower and yeah. more, more, you know, you pay attention more. Yeah. Like, the people who say a diesel motor or an electric motor will never replace diesel is absolutely true. I don't think yeah. an electric motor on a sailboat powered by any kind of battery in the foreseeable future will ever be able to replace a big diesel with a thousand liter diesel tank, like a Mel's or something like that. Like they can motor for 2000 miles. They could motor across the Atlantic Ocean. You'll never be able to do that with an electric motor. And that's not what we're claiming we're trying to do either. We're just trying to not have to row our boats in and out of anchorages. Yeah. We get a lot of, we get a lot of battery technology isn't there. It's still 10 years out, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's there. If, if you can afford lithium over the longevity of lithium, it's already cheaper than lead acid. Everybody knows that. Yeah. It is a painful thing to have to like turn around and spend that kind of cash on lithium. But you can get Nissan Leaf packs, you can get Chevy Volt packs, you can get Tesla packs for very, very cheap. And they're fine. I did the math on even at a 12,000, even if you spent $12,000 on a lithium ion battery bank and everything, um, it, it ends up being like a third cheaper than if you actually use your diesel to motor all those all those miles. Like when you calculate the amount of cycles you're going to get um, and the amount of money that you spent up front and the amount of money you would have paid on diesel per gallon, minus the cost of the electric motor, like not thinking about that, just the cost of the batteries, um, it's actually, it ends up being cheaper than, than paying for all that diesel. It's an interesting thing to try to run numbers on because like there's so many variables that it's really, yeah. it's really difficult. I think my favorite one to, to mention to people is that every day we produce about a gallon and a half of diesel fuel, roughly. Mm -hmm. Like that's how we like to see it. So that's, that's like kind of the easiest thing to comprehend. It's not much, but it's enough to motor five to eight miles a day if we need to, and we can charge it, that back up off the solar in a day or two, so. Yeah. It is all about being able to be self-sufficient. Yeah. Because you don't have to go back to shore to refill every oh single time. You don't have to worry about running out of gas. Our biggest headache in the last two years of sailing to the Caribbean was finding places to fill up our propane tank. And, and every island's different, or you have to send it to this town, or it'll take a week, or it costs this much, or it's a different fitting. Every island was different. We found it was cheaper just to like buy whatever propane tank they had and just install it than it was to try to refill our own tanks. Yeah. And that was just propane. Like I know diesel's semi-easier to get, but... I don't know. We, we never had an issue with it, honestly. Yeah. Um, so how about we talk about how each of us recharge our batteries? Because I'm sure all of us have solar. That's the main 
source of our... Some people have a little more <laughs> solar than others. How much solar do you have to power we your batteries? We have 700 watts. Jesus. Okay. So we have yeah. two huge ass house solar panels. Yeah, yes. same as ours, they're yeah. house solar panels. Yeah. Yeah. And do you guys have wind generators as well? Nope. Or plan no, to? No space. <laughs> it's actually a mizzen yeah. mast. You yeah. just flip the solar <laughs> panels up and you can just... <laughs> Actually, one thing that I've seen in the yard, and I'm not sure of what they're thinking is, but people will put solar panels up, but then they'll put up wind, wind vanes oh, or whatever. Oh, defeats the purpose of having solar yeah, panels. Yeah, and they're absolutely. shading their solar mm -hmm. panels, which defeats the purpose. We've we've very seriously considered if we get a wind generator, putting it on the top of our mast. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but like I don't see the reason why not. Wind generators are designed to be you know 50 to 100 feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. I guess going up and maintain them or running the wires or something. I don't know. But if you're running, <laughs> if you're running an AC 40 volt wind generator, for, right? <laughs> yeah. Small person going up the mountain. Jordan, Randy, do you guys have solar? And yeah, so we're gonna we don't have the solar panels yet because we don't have the, the arch built. But we're gonna get we're getting an arch built for the back of our boat, um, and we're gonna put the solar panels up there. And then we, we thought about that issue. We have a wind generator already, so we thought about that issue with shading. The company's called like Nautical Creations or something yeah. like that, but he's basically custom making the arch out of aluminum for us. Um, and we're going to try to work with him to maybe like try to get that uh, wind generator as far maybe out away from the panels as much as possible. So I, I don't know. We'll, we're going to figure it out, and it might not work. We might have to move it, but we'll, we'll see. But we have a, we have a silent wind 48-volt um, wind generator as well. So nice. we're in 600 watts of solar, so two 300 watt energy panels. Good to know because we've we've lived just fine on our 480 watt panels. Like that's more than enough in the Caribbean to keep your fridge and your laptops and stuff running. Uh, we've never really had an issue with it, even in even in Puerto Rico when we we're getting rained on for two weeks. Like it wasn't enough to keep our lead acid batteries topped up, but it was enough to put in enough that we could use it the next day. So with lithium, you don't have to worry about that anymore because you can you can be at 50% for a month and lithium batteries don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. the nice part about it. One thing that I've seen in terms of wind generator is, for instance, what wind sailing does. They have yeah. a wind generator that they hoist yeah. on what they're at anchor, and when they sail, they just bring it back down. Yeah. That's that's so that's idea. also not So true. our sort of long-term theory is to get... So the solar we have is fine from when we're at anchor. We want to get regen working well enough that while we're sailing, we'll mostly rely on regen from the prop spinning in the water, mm -hmm. which also will most likely be a different motor and a different prop. Um, and then when we're at anchor, if we do, if it's overcast but windy, we'll have a, a wind generator that we hoist probably like in the four triangle somewhere, like over top of the dinghy. So that while we're at, say, when we're at anchor, we have wind and solar, and when we're sailing, we have regen and solar. Yeah. So we always kind of have two, yeah. um, but those are sort of long-term goals. When you guys have been sailing, have you noticed a big difference in your solar, like your solar input? So when we're sailing, we often use a lot less power than we're at anchor because we're not running our laptops. Okay. Our laptops have always been the number Based one strong. power draw mm -hmm. on our on our boat, um, and that included the forty watt fridge that ran all the time. Wow. Now with the with the two fridge, well, the fridge and the freezer, it actually draws less than that old fridge did. Wow. Um, so, because we're not editing while we're sailing, we actually draw less power. Um, and with a wind vane and everything, like our boat could run with zero power. Yeah. Um, so, normally we leave an anchorage with, well, this is back with when we only had four batteries. Normally we'd leave an anchorage with less than fully charged batteries. And by the time we make it to the next one, they'd be fully charged mm -hmm. again, yeah. just because we consumed less power. We also all, I think, I can speak for all of us, have the ability to plug in and power up from a dock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. And we have we have regen as well too. Yeah. We have or we should have prop regen. Wait, 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 wait. Come back. Okay. Uh, we heard a noise and we're like, what was that? Stupid camera. Apparently we lost ten minutes of our conversation because we didn't notice the camera stopped recording. Uh, so downsides of let's try this again. So, so just just in case we lost that part of the conversation let's let's talk about regen really quick a little bit regen really quick um out of the three of us well the the three boats of us yeah uh, jordan and randy are the only one who actually can do regen right now well theoretically so, there's this design to do regen <laughs> we know that as far as what scott from electric yacht told us like if we we would be better off if we had like a three blade prop and I, the only thing that we've been told is that we kind of have to go like at least four to five knots, I believe, for it to start working. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not sure how well it will work. Cool. Um, We're excited to, to see your updates. Yeah, for sure. The thing with regen and why I think companies don't like talking about it too much, 
is a lot of people have these big expectations about I'll be able to run my AC while sailing and it's not like that at all. A sailboat needs like four different propellers, right? Like one to go forwards, one while you're sailing that just disappears, one to go in reverse, and then a different prop that's really efficient at regen, so like turning backwards while you're sailing. Um, and it's kind of impossible to like, you know, change your prop out while you're sailing. So every prop is a compromise. Um, but yeah, if you get regen, it's gonna be like 100 or 200 watts. It's not gonna be something outrageous. Uh, so that's, I usually think why they're kind of skeptical because they don't think that that's a good number. But I know when we're like, our boat on average runs at 90 watts. Like if we can make 90 watts on a given hour, like in a given hour, we can keep our boat running. So 100 watts would be fine for us. Like right. if that's constant, that'd be totally fine. Yeah, I can't wait to see what we get, so. It, you know, the motor is designed to have it. It's just, I don't know what we're going to get. Well, and you guys with brush DC motor, you should be able to do it too. What's your motor controller, Sepcon? Yeah, Sepcon. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. You might have to like play with a throttle or whatever. Yeah. But Well, we still got the tranny hook to it too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of in that boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, dude, it's easier, but we gained, we gained almost double efficiency when we took our transmission oh, out. Oh, wow. Like yeah. it went, we went from drawing 85 to 90 amps to motor at three knots to drawing like 30 amps at three knots or something like it was huge yeah. so i don't know that might just be because our batteries were shit as well no no we, we but... draw about about that 70, really 75 for at, at three knots or yeah. so yeah. Yeah. yeah if you got rid of the transmission and put in like a belt drive reduction gear or something it yeah. don't tell them this but I they need make, to be out of the door. No, you can leave now. <laughs> just learn how to sail. But for, for like a thousand bucks, you can buy the, the already made. Yeah, it's 600 actually. 600? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they sell it. So, yeah. you just have so to we'll just buy it. it and then we'll install it when we're in the Bahamas. There exactly. You go. Yeah. What made you guys go with installing the transmission? Um, yeah, it was just simple. Yeah. Simple. The transmission's just there and you can just like we stick an electric it. motor on the yeah. back of it and it just works. It yeah. was so easy for us to go. It was with the still working. But you will you will get a lot more fish. People are like, oh get rid of the transmission, we're like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then we finally did, we're like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> we just doubled our range. Yeah. Yeah. Have you tested running the motor slowly on the solar alone so that you can work your way through the doldrums? And could you attach a fin blade to the motor shaft for direct cooling or would that draw away power from the motor drive? So I think we're the only ones that can sort of answer this question because you guys haven't actually like gone out and done those tests yet. We haven't actually tested it either, um, mostly because our old system was way less efficient than our current system. So our solar on like the best we've ever seen maybe brings in seven or eight amps at 48 volts. So um, yeah, that wouldn't get us far on our old system. On our new system, it might get us to a knot maybe. Uh, but what we've actually joked about is having, they make roll up solar panels and you can put, if we went down both sides of our boom, we could get almost 1200 watts of solar and we could just plug it in. Um, so if we were like becalmed in the doldrums, that would be a theory is just put them down the side of the boom, stretch them out to the lifelines. And for 1200 watts, we could motor it like two or three knots, probably mm, yeah. no problem. So that'd be an interesting thing to try though. But in reality, we probably wouldn't. No. get stuck in the doldrums because we plan it so that you we plan get so that you stuck. don't and you get big light weather sails because even in the doldrums there usually no. is like a knot or two of wind <laughs> no. and if you have a big big light wind sail and you know how to keep it out you can probably get yourself out of it but it sounds like something that you'd want to do on a big catamaran with a lot of solar <laughs> hells yeah yeah oh catamarans have catamarans are perfect for electric man yeah it's true how would you get out of a real emergency situation that one so the, we, we have tons of questions i'm sure you guys get them too about yeah. Diesel motors, dot, 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 blank, 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 safety. Like, they're all sort of the same genre of, like, I would never trust my wife and kids to an electric motor, or, like, what happens in a storm, or, if, or like, the, the ones we get are like, what if you're on a lee shore and your anchor's dragging and it's a gale and you're blowing towards a reef and your motor doesn't work? We're like, then you're fucked, man. Yeah, like, yeah. like there's, there's, nothing's going to work if that's the case. That's just poor planning. Yeah. <laughs> there's a running notion that diesel motors are a safety factor on a sailboat. We had a diesel motor with like issues with the fuel pump and the fuel line, so our diesel engine would quit on us. Yeah. So we don't really see it that way as like a safety factor if it's not that reliable. I don't think anybody should rely on using their diesel as a safety factor on their boat. I think you need to rely on your sails as safety factors. You need to know how to actually plan. Well, your sails and you actually you need to know how to weather plan. So you need to plan plan your route. Um, you know, 
Um, weather in advance. Yeah, weather in yeah. advance. And you, you need to know uh, heavy weather sailing techniques. Mm-hmm. You need to know how to reef. You need to know um, how your boat reefs. You know, a lot of people don't even, like, they don't have enough reefs in their mainsail. With us, we have a, we have in-mass furling and we have a furling uh, Genoa. So we can reef, you know, as all, much as, as, much as we want. Yeah. So I would say, you know, for people to look into heavy weather sailing techniques, Skip Novak series on heavy weather sailing. It's on YouTube. Um, they can find it. That's a great resource. Um, that's the best way to be safe on a sailboat, in my opinion. Even, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you summarize it for everyone here. Yeah, for real. Yeah. But seriously, like even people that seem to think that in a storm a diesel will mm-hmm. save your boat, that's not true because you cannot outrun a storm with your diesel motor unless you have a really, really fast power boat. We've met tons of sailors that their heavy weather sailing technique is drop all your sails, fire up the motor, motor to windward until it's over. Like, that's their technique, and to me that doesn't make any sense at all. But it's true, a lot of boats aren't rigged for heavy weather. Like, you need either a cutter rig or a removable storm sail or a gale rider, whatever they are, in a tri-sail or a third or fourth reef in your mainsail. Um, we did the entire Caribbean with one reef in our mainsail, and it was awful. Every time we got above like 20 knots, we put the reef in, and then every time we got to like 25 or 30, we just have this tiny little bit of Genoa out, and we'd be heeled over rail in the water, <laughs> sailing at like three knots, because we just didn't have like the pull to get us forward. Uh, but we fixed that in the Rio. We've got three reefs now. It's just so much nicer. Yeah. Our boat just balances so much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the other one? When oh, what happens if you lose your mast? So what happens if you lose your mast? People think mast down, I can motor, but. Like, what are the two reasons you lose a mast? Either you didn't inspect your rig and something broke, like something snapped because you just failed to like see it early enough. Um, and if that's the case, you're probably not maintaining your diesel any better, right? Uh, and the other one would be like if you got rolled with your sails up or something in a really nasty storm and it snapped your mast off. But if your boat goes upside down, it's almost a guarantee your diesel motor's not going to start because all that dirt in the bottom of your tank washed in or water got in. Like, diesels are actually pretty sensitive to that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Or water got in your exhaust and, like, in the air intake. I don't know. There was one example I like to actually talk about when people are talking about, like, motoring to weather with their diesel and thinking that's safer was actually, I mean, you guys met them. You guys uh, cruised with them, but the guys from Sea Change, well, they, put, they put that one video out um, where they're, they're, they decided to motor to weather, or they decided to motor to weather, and their diesel actually sucked air because there was so much uh there was so much chop and their diesel quit because they were sucking too much air so that wasn't a good idea for them and they realized that so i mean it's just an example yeah having especially having electric motors or having no motors at all definitely makes sailors better sailors oh for you have to be (laughs) because you plan better you rely on your sails you make sure you have the right equipment instead of saying oh if i'm in trouble i'm just gonna press start which is never gonna be a good idea well and each person like i know we've also met tons of sailors where the guy's the sailor and the wife just knows how to start the diesel motor so if if the guy falls over she can start the motor and like motor back to him or if anything happens she can start the motor and she knows how to kind of drive it like a car but for us like i remember we're coming into beckway yeah, it was Beckway. It was after you were doing your like your like sort of semi solo sail where I did, like had nothing to do with it. Like semi solo. So we, well, because I was on the boat, but like I wasn't giving any instruction or direction. I was like cooking and filming, right? And she was tacking in the anchorage like around boats and this like by herself. I was down below kind of videoing it, and this boat boy was coming in behind us because usually like the first one out is the guy that you end up dealing with, and so he came way out to meet us, and he was coming in, coming in, watching her tack, watching her tack, and then she like sailed up took the sails down, back down on the anchor, and he stands up in his boat and starts <laughs> laughing. And I was like, hell yeah. But it's so true because like, y- you both have to become proficient at yeah. single-handing your boat if you don't rely on your motor. And hardly anybody we've met, both people on the boat yeah. can single-hand it. Hardly anybody. Very, very few. Yeah, That's exactly why we got the boat that we got. Because it's small yeah. enough you can yeah. both single-hand. Because... I want to be able to do it. Yeah. He wants to be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. It's also a safety factor too, because if something happens to Dan in the middle of a passage, I want to be confident enough that it's second nature to me to yeah. know how to reef, to know how to. You know, like it. if I fall down, and <laughs> split my head open, yeah. and I'm unconscious on the floor in yeah. the middle of a storm. You know, like if something like that yeah. were to happen. maybe happen, <laughs> Kika would know how to heave to and stop the boat yeah. and come down below yeah. and stitch my head back together. You know, like hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you don't you don't want that situation to happen, yeah. and that's when you freak yeah. out about it because yeah. you've never tried it before. So I think any couple out on a sailboat should mm-hmm. practice both of them 
yeah. sailing by themselves, even if they're not technically by themselves, but at yeah. least know how to operate the boat by yourself because yeah. because that Just that's safety. gonna save your life. Single hand tacking, single hand reefing, single hand dropping the sails, single hand yeah. anchoring, single hand heaving to like those are the big ones. Motoring's easy. Yeah. Another big thing that's Huge. important to have uh, if you don't want to rely, because you shouldn't rely on your diesel, is to have an anchor you can trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. Because <laughs> when we were in Isla Mujeres, anchored just in front of uh, Jordan and Dez on Project Atticus, um, they had a uh, the, the size down from our anchor, Mantis, and we had, so that they had a 45 pound Mantis, we had a 55 pound rock now. A norther came through, we all spun around, and the entire anchorage went back. I called them on the radio, we're like, how's it going, guys? At Jordan Wyoming, they say we're one of how many? Three. Three boats out here that did not drag. Because, yeah. like, it was nuts. Like, 40 boats all just kind of went like, <laughs> um, But, yeah, we've, we've, that's the other one. It's like, what happens if your anchor drags? Is your motor strong enough to, like, get out or, like, come back in or maneuver? And we've just never dragged, so it's never been an issue. Um, and we've, we've even met people who are started dragging and they fire up their diesel and motor against the winds to take pressure off of their anchor, which to me is just like the most absurd thing ever. Just like buy a bigger anchor. They're not that expensive. Like $500 is not that expensive considering it's the thing that's stopping your sailboat from getting destroyed. Yeah. Like that anchor, that the Rockna 55 is our insurance policy. Yeah. You guys have, you guys, they just got a Mantis, right? Mantis 55. 55. Yeah. Nice. And you guys have a Mantis too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have a Mantis 35, uh, and then I believe we're going to get a Hurricane one as well before we go, so. Uh, yeah. No, that's good though. That's good. Yeah, I mean, having a, well, and the other thing that we've, that most people don't think about with an anchor is when we're sailing into an anchorage, we sail up, luff the sails, and drop the anchor at that moment. We dump it overboard, and we know that we leave the sail up and we back the boat down under sail and use the sail to set the anchor and we know it's going to catch every time and without that insurance policy like we'd be if we had some anchor that we couldn't trust there's no way we'd yeah. ever leave the dock yeah. man like that's like the number one thing yeah uh but what are your next plans like when are you planning on leaving the dock what state is your boat in where are you going yeah. next yeah we are pretty much ready to leave dock um we just need to get the chain for the anchor yeah but yeah, we're just gonna, I guess in the next week or two, yeah, we're gonna start, start anchoring, anchoring out. out head yes. down here, we're gonna meet up with some people. Maybe with some maybe. people when they're yeah, ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we also, you know, we might end up in the Keys and then yeah. head over to the Bahamas. Nice. Yeah. Down to the Sweet Keys, deal. Yeah. Sweet deal. Bahamas. Bahamas is such a great place to sort of like practice with all that stuff yeah. because it's wide open, it's all nine feet deep, yeah. you can anchor anywhere, it's yeah. all sand, like you yeah. can just mess around and yeah. not worry about it. Yeah, it's cool. Our boat's yeah. in a state of chaos now. <laughs> um, they all? Exterior they all? is almost done, yeah. so we were hoping to get in the water. We were, we're actually still scheduled to go in the water on the 15th, but we're actually thinking about slowing down a little bit and finishing up on the interior. Because our interior right now is still pretty much, like, torn apart. Yeah, like, I don't care what state the boat is in, <laughs> on December 1st, we're going in the water. Like, 100%, so. Yeah, I was going to say, don't get too comfortable where Whether you are. Whether floats or not, we're <laughs> going in the water. <laughs> we kind of did the opposite. Yeah. Like, the exterior of our boat is still completely not finished at all, but, like, we spend 99% of our time on the boat, inside the boat. It's where we live. So we're like, let's do the inside. The outside can stay ugly as long as it wants. We're going to keep bumping into stuff and like... Yeah. We did it the opposite. Yeah. You guys did the outside and yeah. then... Our outside, outside was outside. horrible. Fair enough. Outside was it horrible. Was really bad. <laughs> Ours kind of looks like that if you look up close. But on camera, you just jack up the exposure. Yes. <laughs> it looks fine. Well, in a few months, we're all going to be in the Bahamas. You will be having a campfire all together. So that'll be kind of cool, though, because our plans right now are to sail up to Charleston to finally do our non-skid on deck and hopefully do our, our stainless rails mm -hmm. and a new pulpit and stuff. Um, but we can't do it here. It rains almost every day, so we can't do anything on the outside of our boat here. Yeah. Uh, and then probably shoot straight down to Haiti for maybe December. So like we'll be in Haiti in December coming up. You guys will be on the west coast of Florida coming around. You guys will be in the Keys coming around and yeah. somewhere we'll all like yeah. meet up and have yeah. like a battle of the electric boats. So, so stay tuned for part two of this awesome yeah. conversation. Yes. <laughs> it also is kind of interesting because we're all like at kind of the same phase <laughs> ironically. Because <Yeah. laughs> like you guys aren't even in the water yet. You guys aren't ready to leave the dock. We left three years ago and all of our boats are kind of in similar levels of like 
propulsion capability. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting in a you know a year for even a couple of months from now to, to meet up and actually have some hard facts, some yeah. hard numbers, compare how yeah. it's going. I think that's it, and I hope we answered a bunch of questions. Sorry, it's probably going to be pretty long. It's I don't think this be is going to be a video. twenty minute video. <laughs> but it's been good though. Uh, yeah, right. hopefully that was really helpful information. And if you have more questions, guys, make sure you live. You live. Leave. <laughs> make sure you leave them in the comments below and make sure you check out these guys' channel and then everything in the description below. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe to all of us. Alright. Thanks guys Bye for guys. joining Cheers. us from Annapolis. Thanks for hanging out.